Hey everyone, welcome back. Professor Hank here. Today we're going to talk about variables in Java. We're going to talk about how you can declare variables, the different data types you have to choose from for your variables, how to assign values to your variables, and finally how to print them out onto the screen. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's have a definition of what a variable is. A variable is going to be a named memory location. So we're going to be able to refer to chunks of memory by a name that we will assign to it and we'll be able to refer to it in our program by that name. And there are rules on what you can use as their name, right? Other, otherwise known as an identifier. So the rules are that your name for your memory location can be any of the characters, uppercase A through Z, lowercase A through Z. You can use an underscore and you can use the digits zero through nine. Now you can't begin your variable name with those digits, but you can have them in it. So for example, you could name something like this. You can name a variable something like this. So you could say dogs 12, that would be a valid name or my apple Hi would be a valid name or professor underscore Hank 20 would be all examples of valid names. What you can't do is you couldn't do something like this. You couldn't say zero dogs or something like that, right? Because you can't begin a variable name with an integer. So this is right out. Now, when we create our variables, we have to select a data type and a data type tells Java what type of data we're going to store in that variable and the range of values that we can store in that variable. So the first one we'll look at is called a byte and a byte can store whole numbers from negative 128 to 127. A short can also store whole numbers from negative 32,768 to 32,767. An int can store from negative 2,147,483,648 to 2,147,648. An long can store a really big whole number or a really small one um, from negative Oh boy, I don't even know what this number is. 9223, let's, let's put some commas in here. 223, 372, 036, 854, 775, 808. <laughs> Two, um, the positive version of that, minus one. So a really, really, really big number. Okay, so these first four primitive data types can hold integers that fall within the range of those values. Now we've got a couple of data types for variables that can store floating point numbers. And the first is a float and a float can store fractional numbers and they are good for storing fractional numbers for up to six or seven decimal places, right? So the float data type will store floating point numbers with an accuracy up to about six or seven decimal places. Okay. And that's because there are rounding errors that can happen because of the way that computers represent floating point numbers. So if you're working with a number and you want to make sure that the number is stored accurately up to that limit, then a float could be your choice. You also have a double, which can store a floating point number, a fractional number, and that is good out to 15 to 16 decimal places. Now, what's the difference between the two? Why don't you just use double all the time? Well, you probably could in most applications. The main difference here is that a double takes up more memory than a float, and a long takes more memory than an int, which takes more memory than a short, which takes more memory than a byte. So, the bigger the integer, the more memory you need, and the more decimal places you need to represent, the more memory you need, okay? Now, the next thing we'll look at is the Boolean data type, and that is used for storing true or false, literally true or false, okay? The character data type, and that will allow you to store a single character, something like a question mark, exclamation point, the character two, um, uppercase C, and so on. So it'll store one character. 
Okay, so let's look at an example of how we can declare a variable. So let's say that I decided that I wanted to store um, the number 100,000. Well, if I wanted to store the number 100,000, it would not fit inside of a byte variable. It wouldn't fit inside of a short variable. It's too big for both of those. But it would fit inside of an integer variable, right? Because 100,000 is less than this 2 billion and something. So I'm going to create a variable of type integer. So I'm going to use that int keyword. And then I'm going to name it something following our rules up there that we talked about. So I'm going to use the name number. If I put a semicolon there, I've declared my variable. So that's going to set aside enough memory to store one of those values. Now we've got a little highlight here because NetBeans is detected that we haven't used it yet. And so it's giving this little notification. You can see their variable number is neither read or written to. It's not being used yet, right? Now, if we wanted to assign a value to it, then what we can do is we can use the name of the variable. We use this operator called the assignment operator, which is just a single equals. And then we use our number. So I want to assign 100,000 to it. So that is 100,000. And a semicolon at the end. And I've now assigned a value to it. Okay, now if I wanted to display that number to the screen, I could use system.out.println. And then I would put inside these parentheses here the name of the variable. So now if I do that, then we're going to see... When I run this, I'll go up here and I'll click on the run icon up here, the run project. You can I see in my output window here, there is the number 100,000. So I printed out the contents of that variable. Okay, so a integer is just one data type, but I could also store a floating point number. So I could do double and then we'll just call this floating point number. And then I'll sign, I'll declare, and I'll define at the same time. This is known as, a, as an initialization statement. And I'll assign it, I don't know, an approximation for pi. Okay. Now when I do that, I've created a variable here named floating point number. That's type double, which means it's going to be accurate out to 15 to 16 decimal places. And so I assigned 3.14159 so I can feel very confident that it's going to store that number accurately. And then I can print that out as well. So I could do something like this, loading point number. Okay, now let's go ahead and build it and run it. And then you can see there's the 3.14159 along with the 100,000. Okay, now I can also create a variable of type Boolean. So I'll type Boolean and then I'll create a variable called yes, no and I'll initialize it with false, right? So when we say true or false, we literally mean true or false. Those are keywords in the Java programming language. Now let's see what happens if we try to print that out. Let's see what we see. Yes, no. Okay, we'll go ahead and run it. Now you can see we see false. That's why I assigned to it. Of course, I could have assigned true to it as well, true or false, and it would work just fine. Okay, we'll take a look at the care data type and we'll just name this character data type C and then I'll assign to it a character. Now the way you assign a character to a character variable is you use single quotes and then what's inside of the single quotes is going to be the character you want to store there. So let's say I wanted to store um, a hashtag. Do that, put my little semicolon at the end, don't forget your semicolons at the end of statements. And this right here is going to be assigned to the memory location that can store a character that we're calling C. Now, if I print that out, system dot out, print line, and then we'll just do the C here and run this. You'll see that we're going to have um, our hashtag right there. Now, how I named these things. So you can see right here, floating underscore point underscore number. The way that you name things is completely up to you. And there's different styles for how you name things. As long as you follow these rules that we outlined up here towards the beginning, right? You can follow that, but your own style can dictate, you know, how you're going to actually name stuff. So this right here, floating point number with all the underscores in there, all, all um, lowercase, this is known as snake case. Very popular in language such as Python. This right here, the yes, no, where I start off with yes, lowercase, and then the no capitalized with the end there, where they're all mushed together. That's a particular case or style known as camel case. And camel case allows you to read things a little bit easier, right? Because you can see where the two words 
you know, begin and end. You know, if you had something a little bit longer, like let's say that I wanted to create a float named Professor Hank is the best, right? Or something like that. Then you'll see that it's a little bit easier to see the different words within that variable name, right? So Professor is easy to pull out. The Hank is easy to pull out, is, and so on. So which one you want to use is purely preference. Okay, it's a stylistic preference. In Java, it's common to use this camel case here. Okay, so one last thing before we finish up here. We talked about primitive data types. That's what these guys are known as, primitive data types. So primitive data types. But there's another category of data types too, and these are non-primitive data types. Now these are data types you can write yourself, for example, but there's also a few that are available in the Java library or that you get instant access to. So we'll just take a look at one of them and that is the string data type. And the string data type is what you use to store strings. Okay, so this is for storing strings. So how do we use that? You can even see that we had that listed right there. Okay, so let me show you how you do that. We use the string keyword and that's upper case s and then we name it whatever we want so maybe i'll name it first name and then i will initialize it with my first name and this right here is a string literal and it's a string because it's in between double quotes i remember with characters a character went in between single quotes right so i can print the contents of this variable out just like i could all the others i'll do print line here and then i will do my first name and then I will run it and then you will see that there is Hank. Now a string, I'll just point out, can be one or more characters. So I could also have done something like this, string word, and then I'll assign to it just a space, right? So all I did was hit space here. And so if I run that, you can see it compiles just fine, okay? But if I print it out, what are you going to see? Well, nothing, because it's just a space, right? So I can print out just like anything else, okay? And you can see that we've got right here, underneath my first name, that little space there. So I could do something like this, super, space, duper, you know, exclamation point, exclamation point, and um, no problem, okay? So that's an example of a non-primitive data type. Okay, so that's everything that I wanted to talk to you about in this video. What did we go over? We talked about what a variable is. It's a named memory location. We talked about the rules for creating a variable. We looked at how to select an appropriate data type out of the primitive data type choices we have. We went through the different types. We also looked at how you can declare variables. We looked at how you can assign values. We looked at how you can initialize variables. And we looked at how we can print them out to the screen. As always, if you're a student of mine and you have any questions about the content of this video or any of the other videos in our classes, then feel free to contact me via Canvas email or stop by my online Zoom office hours. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.